so you're ready to build your new Arcanist? You've got your leveling strats, skill point routine, training gear, but wait, how do you actually play it? Let's face it, mastering a new class in ESO takes work. I can't teach you how to tank Planesbreaker or solo a Zerg in Cyrodiil with a single video, but I can save you a ton of time by setting out the fundamentals that you should know when starting out. Specifically, Crux and how it works for each role, essential class abilities, and then the usual damage, healing, and tanking tips. Start with the Crux minigame. It's actually very simple. Some abilities generate Crux, others consume it to become more powerful. You don't have to engage with this, but you should, and here's why. Generating Crux restores Magicka or Stamina, whichever is highest. Consuming Crux restores Ultimate, and doing either boosts your critical damage and critical healing. All these passes reward you constantly in the background, and meanwhile Harnessed Quint Essence boosts weapon and spell damage whenever you restore resources. Regen doesn't count. It has to be a resource restoring event, like taking a synergy, the initial pop from a potion, or the hideous clarity passive being triggered. The cooldowns are also very forgiving, so we really don't have to work very hard. Just keep the crux coming and going regularly and you'll always have more damage, more crit, more sustain and more ultimate. And there are even better reasons. The Fate Carver Beam lasts longer and ticks twice as hard when cast with three crux. Don't underestimate this. The beam can easily do 150k damage at zero stacks. And that jumps to 450k at three stacks. So yeah, it's not even close. Build up that crux as quick as you can. And unless you know you're gonna need it for a big burst coming up, blow it. But there are also Arcanist passives, which give you some incentive to sit on your crux stacks for extra mitigation or healing, which means supports can play a bit more tactically and wait for the right moment to spend their crux, especially if the fight is predictable. We'll get into that a bit more in a minute. First, let's look at some essential utility skills. You should always know how to get major resolve for extra resistances. And in this case, it's Fate Woven Armor. Either morph works. The default self-heal is Rune Mend, which generates Crux and can be morphed into a heal over time. But it has two drawbacks I want to mention. Firstly, it scales to your offensive stats, not max health, so not very useful for tanks. Secondly, the cost is determined by your highest resource. A lot of Arcanist abilities have this feature, and at first glance it seems smart and useful. Problem is, ever since hybridization, we want a few abilities in our rotation that don't come out of our primary resource, otherwise sustain is tough. Zos did give the Arcanist one ability whose cost is determined by your lowest resource, which is good thinking, and the Arcanist sustain is generally pretty good, but these dynamic costs can still bite you in the ass if you're not careful. It sucks when you need a quick heal, you look at your bars and see your primary resource is completely empty when your off resource hasn't even been used. Keep this in mind especially when reading tooltips. All costs are shown in Magicka by default, so the amount and the resource itself might change when you slot it. Those are the caveats with Rune Mend. It's still an awesome burst heal in situations where you need it. That and Major Resolve are the main ones. But I also want to draw attention to Arcanist Domain, Rune of the Colorless Pool, and Inspired Scholarship. Domain is the swirly green AoE that grants minor courage, endurance, fortitude, and intellect. Getting all these buffs in one place is super valuable and one of the morphs heals you, so that's definitely worth knowing about. Rune of the Colorless Pool makes a similar case, but for debuffs. Minor vulnerability for 20 seconds isn't that unusual, but 20 seconds of minor brittle from a single cast is unprecedented. These two together are valuable enough that DDs might even want to run it if the debuffs aren't present, in solo content, for instance. I'm not saying you must use these abilities, of course not. Just making sure you know they're available and what they do. Finally, 
Inspired Scholarship is the buff that wraps your weapons in those beautiful green markings. More importantly, it adds extra damage ticks to class abilities, generates free crux, and grants permanent major brutality and sorcery when slotted on either bar. Currently, this is the only ability in the game that can do that, and the main reason I'm mentioning it here. Just good to know. Now let's get more specific. If you're making a damage dealer, I suggest you treat the Arcanist like a one-trick pony, at least to start with. Spam the flail on bosses and trash to build crux, then fire the beam. It's such a strong combo, super easy, it kind of works everywhere and leaves you lots of bar space to level other things as you go. The Languid Eye Ultimate and Inspired Scholarship can go on the back bar. If your Magicka Arcanist can't sustain the flail, or you just want to use the Magicka Morph, Tentacular Dread, you can use Rune Blades to build cracks instead. You won't have anywhere near as much cleave damage, but I don't want to be prescriptive. There are various ways to make it work. As for the back bar, an Inferno Staff with Wall is smart, because Arcanists get a boost to status effects. But I'm going with Daggers and Quick Cloak. The dot lasts so long and lines up neatly with Scholarship, so you can just forget about it and keep cycling your front bar combo. If you haven't been much on PTS, I think you'll be surprised at just how effective this can be. Especially once you can morph Inspiration to Scholarship, since that generates an extra crux during the beam itself, so it only takes two flails to get back up to three, and that means almost no downtime between beams. It's an extremely easy combat loop, but the animation and sound design are so well done that it doesn't get boring the way you might expect. Now, in case I hadn't made it clear, there is more to Arcanist damage than this. Khan will be posting some awesome in-depth stuff on this channel soon. This is just to help you guys jump in and start playing rather than figuring everything out from scratch. You should absolutely play around with different combos and different morphs. But early on it pays to keep things simple and use the shortest route to victory and that's the beam. Moving on to Arcanist healers, the picture is quite similar. In early game content, so long as you're placing Reconstructive Domain under the group, colorless pool on bosses, and keeping up your combat prayer, your work is pretty much done. That's already a lot of juicy buffs and debuffs, plus minor evasion for the group from the circumvented Fade passive. This is why an Arcanist support is such great value. Fulminating Rune is also handy in dungeons, since all three teammates can take the synergy. It hits hard, so if you drop it in trash, the adds are stacked tight and everyone hits the synergy, you can get several hundred k damage from a single cast. Synergies aren't such a big deal until people have Undaunted Command unlocked, but it's good practice. Another thing you can practice is the healer version of the DPS combo, build up 3 crux with Chakram of Destiny, then fire Cascade to consume the crux, pump out crazy heals and resources for your group. The heal itself is probably going to be wasted in normal dungeons or overland content. Honestly, it will probably be wasted in 90% of veteran content too, but like I said, it's good practice. The resource return is nice, and let's face it, it's fun. There's also a passive called Healing Tides, which increases your healing done by 3% for active crux. So feel free to sit at 3 stacks and enjoy 9% fatter ticks from all your hots and just fire Cascade when your group needs a top up. If your group is stomping through everything at warp speed, you can build up Crux with Rune Blades instead of Chakram Shields for a bit of damage. Or you can drop the heals and go full DPS. Up to you. You can also choose between the Glyphic Ultimate, a Damage Alt or Warhorn if you have it. Arcanist tanking is a bit different. There's no instant burst here like Polar Wind or Coagulating Blood. Instead, we get easy access to resistances and mitigation, fat shields and burst heals that can be triggered so long as we think ahead. This might throw some people off at first, but once you get used to it, it's really strong and you can survive and sustain most things indefinitely with very little effort. I'm sure in the most punishing content, it's harder to preempt all the boss's moves. 
But for those of us who just want to practice the basics whilst we level, our Crux minigame loop revolves around Impervious Rune Ward. This is a double shield, a 15k shield for 5 seconds and a massive 25k shield which lasts for just 1 second. So if you time it right, you can just negate a lot of boss attacks. But if you cast Rune Ward with Crux, it also heals you for about 5k per Crux consumed. So at a basic level, the trick is to reach 3 stacks as quick as you can, then spend it for a heal when you need it. You can use Runic Jolt to generate Crux with every taunt, and Crux Weaver Armor for a free Crux every 5 seconds. And potentially Chakram of Destiny if you don't have a healer and want to chuck shields at your group. I've been using Runic Sunder and Crux Weaver, and that works great. For one thing, with Runic Sunder slotted, you take 2% less damage per active Crux, which really lets you stack the damage mitigation. If you're in an oh shit situation, you can always hit the Rune Ward with just one or two stacks, then fire off a couple of taunts while the shield lasts to get back up to three. Beyond that, what you slot depends on whether you've got an Arcanist healer taking care of Domain and Colorless Pool. If not, then that's your job. I'd also slot Rune Guard of Stillwaters for group minor protection and a free 12k heal if you go under 50% health. Blockade of Frost with a Crusher enchant is sort of a given, and Major Breach either from Pierce Armor, Caltrops, or Elemental Susceptibility. As for the ultimates, I'd slot Gibbering Shield on the front bar, not to use it, just for the Wellspring of the Abyss passive, and on the back bar, either the Glyphic. Warhorn if you have it, or just a damage ult of some kind. That's about as deep as I'm going to go into each roll. Remember, this is just about getting started, and I don't want to overwhelm anyone with too much information, but we've definitely covered the basics. Before we finish, a couple of bonus tips. Don't forget to slot your CPs as soon as you've made your character. They're not as transformative as they used to be, but every little helps and you'll be irate if you grind all the way to 50 and then realize you didn't have them slotted. By the way, the Fate Carver Beam is an AoE dot, so Arcanist DDs should slot Thaumaturge and Biting Aura. If you've been collecting intricate gear, here's a reminder of roughly how many bits are needed to max out each crafting skill. And if you've been hoarding Master Enchanting Ritz, remember, you can get your Arcanist to 50 instantly by pre-crafting 200 superb purple glyphs for them to deconstruct. Just use whatever green runestone is the most plentiful or least useful to you. That's going to be it for this video. If you haven't watched all eight of them, do it now. They are full of useful tips for building your Arcanist. Thank you so much, guys. I'm still pretty new to this, so all your feedback and engagement means a lot. It also helps me decide what content to make. So now that we're done preparing for Necrom, take a moment and think about what kind of ESO content you'd like to see that isn't being made, and let me know. Meanwhile, sub to the channel for more helpful guides and join my Discord to get expert advice from some of the best players and nicest people in this game. Good luck with your Arcanists, have a great launch, and I'll see you in Necrom.